what are the discussions <laughs> that are going on in creative oh, in the fuck. days leading up to it this? It was fucking ridiculous. And see, here's for one thing, at least two of the, the Wednesday creative days, we would spend me and Russo in a room. And see, when, when Vince McMahon would take a private phone call or have something he, he wanted to deal with outside of creative, he would go in his study, or if we were at the pool, he'd go in the house or whatever. And then whether it was me and Jim Ross and Pat Patterson and Bruce Pritchard, or whether it was me and Vince Russo, or whether whoever was there, would sit and twiddle their fucking dick and wait till Vince came back because you can't do anything unless... You don't even want to start on a long line of thinking unless Vince okays that line of thinking because then, as Vince used to call it, mental masturbation. You're thinking about something you have no control over. You're just jacking yourself off. So we would have to sit and wait while Vince would have these phone calls. First with Sean, then with Brett, then with somebody else weighing in on their fucking opinion, whatever the fuck it was. Then suddenly we got to, as you see this weekend, Friday, November 7th, Toronto, Canada, Saturday the 8th, Detroit, Michigan, Sunday the 9th, Montreal, Quebec. And then Monday and Tuesday, TV was in Ottawa and Cornwall, not Cornhole, Sean, but Cornwall, Ontario. Point is... It gets down to nut cutting time, and suddenly it's revealed that Sean has told Brett one time in the past that he was never going to put him over. So Brett has decided he ain't going to put Sean over. Sean wouldn't put Davey over. So Brett's fucking pissed about that. Brett's leaving to take a job where he's going to go from making a million and a half a year to making two and a half million a year. Meanwhile, Sean's pissed off because he's only making seven hundred and fifty grand a year on his guaranteed contract because he signed it before the money started uh, uh, creeping up. Um, Sean Michaels has had all these goddamn ridiculous fucking personal issues that everybody's fed up with. Everybody likes Brett, but by the same token, he's being so fucking childish in a lot of people's uh, uh, opinions, taking it so seriously. And if he'd have just come out and said, I hate Shawn Michaels, and Shawn Michaels is a prick, and I want Shawn Michaels to die, and I'll never put him over, I would have respected that. But it's like they said, well, if you don't want to put him over on pay-per-view, Brett, what about dropping it to him Friday night? Well, no, I'm not going to let him beat me in Canada. <laughs> in my home country, that's like me. I'm not going to let somebody beat me in the United States of America. Well, okay, then what about Saturday night in Detroit? If you let him beat you in the United States, this is where it was going, folks. If you let him beat you in this country, but not that country, what about Saturday night in Detroit? Well, that don't work because it's, we sold the pay-per-view on me being champion. If I go to Montreal where I'm over and I'm not the champion, it'll let all my Canadian fans down. He said he was a Canadian hero, which he, which he is. But let's face it, that list is not the line. I, 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 I kid, I jest. But whipper Billy Watson level fucking hero here. And at the same time, of course, Michaels is a fucking prick and deserves every bit of the fucking disrespect he's getting from the guy he's working with. And then my question to Vince is, why didn't you think to take the fucking belt off of him before you freed him up to negotiate with fucking Bischoff to get a million dollars extra a year and, and go to work down there? And his contract is up um, basically the next day. Then there was the talk, he was going to fucking, they were going to do some kind of DQ finish, and he was going to come out and just hand the belt to him on fucking Raw. And I, I made my thought known to Vince. I said, why don't you just lay down and let him piss in your mouth while, while he does that? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, here, here's my belt. I'm the champion of your company, but I'm giving you this back because I'm going to go and wrestle for the guys that are going to pay me a lot of money. What does Vince say to this? He said, well, you may be right there, pal. I mean, what can he fucking say? This was the biggest goddamn clusterfuck in the history of clusterfucks. Yet one fucking, the, the, the asshole, at least he was our asshole, he was fucking staying. The good guy was going for more money. So why is his feelings fucking hurt? I'm, I'm saying sodomize me with a goddamn rusty fucking fishing knife on national television for two and a half million dollars a year. Just give me one year of that and none of you assholes here in Connecticut will ever see my fat ass again. I'm fucking fed up with the whole thing. I'm gaining fucking weight. And it was basically, it was a no, it was a no win situation. And what Vince did, and Vince didn't know, I guarantee fucking to you, he didn't know what he did was going to click in the way he, it did, and I'll tell you in a second, but every finish was talked about. Like, how can Brett go over? How can Sean go over? Can there be a DQ? He's going to walk out and drop the belt. Everybody was shooting everything they had. That's why at one point I said, God damn, I said, fucking book him with goddamn Shamrock. 
He'll drop the belt in as a, as a double cross his ass. And that, see, Vince Russo took credit. And I'm, let me tell you this. If, if, the fucking, if the finish was my idea, I wouldn't admit it in public because this is a no-win situation. But I know whose idea it wasn't. It wasn't fucking Vince Russo's. Russo's taking credit for it. Well, I explained to him. When I said double cross in jest about the Shamrock thing, Russo's eyes got even buggier than normal. He didn't know what a double cross was. As Bill Watts used to say, if he was walking through a men's locker room, he'd be whistling Stranger in Paradise. Vince Russo does not know anything about professional athletics or how to manipulate or choreograph or simulate same. Um, but anyway, the point is, and I, I told Vince, I said, and if what happens if fucking Sean does try to cinch up on a small package, Brett will kick out at two and three quarters and beat the piss out of Sean right there on fucking television. And so, uh, it, 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 nobody knew what the fuck that Vince was going to do. And finally, we had the production meeting the night before while the guys were in Detroit. We were in Montreal Saturday night, and we went through the whole fucking format and then got to Sean and Brett and the time they had, and no details were discussed. And I walked over, and I said, as a matter of fact, what is, oh, that's the dates that we would announce those matches on oh, television. I see. See? Um, I said, Vince... I don't want to know anything otherwise. Do you have a finish? Yes, I do. I said, good. That's all I need to know. And I'm figuring some way or another something's going to fucking happen. But since at this point my MO at television and at pay-per-view, since I was not a performer, was to basically get there and either do on cameras at television or agent my matches or whatever, and as soon as the last match got in the ring or the first time I could get the fuck out so I could go and eat and get away from wrestling, I did that. But I stayed for that match because I wanted to see what the fuck was going to happen. And I'm sitting there, and as soon as they go into that fucking spot, I'm like, uh, and right then there's the bell. And I said, I'll see you guys later. And I stood up and got in the car and fucking took off and missed all the rest of the shit because I knew something was going to happen. What, I just didn't know what. What did you think when Vince went to ringside? Um, see, that's the thing. You don't, you, uh, you, they constructed, it was the first ever shoot work double cross. Mm. Because the idea of a double cross is you want to get the result you want without one of the participants knowledge, but without anybody else knowing that there's anything off fucking kilter. They didn't do that. <laughs> he went with the work shoot double cross where he specifically did such things to make sure that everybody knew that the fix was in, but except the guy who was actually getting fucked didn't know till afterwards. So it was a reverse back at you double cross. I don't fucking know. But the point is, he thought, Vince thought he'd be the baby face. And the one thing that I did say, I said, I, I, you know, once again, I said, what the fuck? He's not going to expose the fucking business. Is he going to call the newspaper up and say, well, they fucking screwed me? That's what he did. I couldn't believe... Bret Hart never... And I love you, Bret, but you never called the newspapers and said, you know, all those titles that I won, I really didn't win them. You know, the people put me over. But you lose one for real and you call up and say, I didn't really lose it. He fucking basically gave Vince McMahon all the free publicity in the world. And at the same point where Vince, remember the first couple of weeks he came out and was like, well, the time-honored tradition. Now, and I'm sure Russo is behind that. Now we're telling people, okay, before you leave the company, you're supposed to fucking lay down and drop the belt. Here, John Wayne's supposed to put the Indians over. If he leaves Metro Goldwyn Mayer and goes over to fucking 20th Century Fox, folks, fuck. Just more behind-the-scenes bullshit that Russo sits there and jacks off on because he can be around fucking real men. Um... But anyway, so the time-honored tradition, Vince tries to be the babyface and tried to make Brett the heel. And that wasn't going to work because people would know you screwed the fucking guy because to them wrestling was still wrestling and at least somewhat legitimate. It wasn't sports entertainment like it has become today. No, you screwed the guy out of his title and he's mad and spit on you, of course. And Brett was a fucking hero. So WCW then mismanages the hottest wrestler in the world and ends his career soon after. So that was a tribute to how fucked up they were. Meanwhile, Vince is smart enough, after two or three weeks of trying to be the baby face, and people going, no, fuck you, you fucking asshole. You're the boss, and you stole this guy's belt and screwed him around. All of a sudden, he said, well, maybe I ought to go with this, and there's Mr. McMahon is born. 
That's and you've got The Rock, you've got Austin, and you've got all of a sudden something that people actually can believe about wrestling again, and you've got the greatest heel in the world on television. That's all they needed. And for Russo to say the Attitude Era and Degeneration X and the fact that I had Diva Pillow Fights and all this other stuff, no. It was the two greatest talents of that generation in the ring maturing and getting in the right place right at the right time that the fucking biggest asshole heel fucker that could possibly be exist in wrestling fucked a hero wrestler for real that everybody knew it. Boom. That's what mm. takes things off, and everything else just tails along for the ride. Did you beat Hebner out of the building that night?